Hello everyone, Randy here and in today's video I'm going to show you how to enable developer mode in Farming Simulator 19. And uh, if you enable developer mode, basically it will let you turn off HUDs, it will let you fly in the game, uh, see your frame rates, a bunch of other things it can do as well. Uh, very useful in the game for doing various things. So anyway, to turn on developer mode, what you need to do is go to your documents. So documents, my games. Farming Simulator 19, and uh, by the way, if you already know how to do this for previous versions of Farming Simulator, it is the same for 19 here. So, what you're going to do is go to your game XML file, that's this one right here, and I'm going to open it with, you can either open it with Notepad, or if you have Notepad++, uh, it's a lot easier to do with Notepad++, so I'm just going to show you both ways here, because I have Notepad++. Uh, you're going to scroll down to the bottom of it here where it says Development. And then it says controls. Uh, by default, it is set to false. You're going to change this to true here. So you can see I've already got it set to true. So change the false to true right there. Close out, save it, open the game, and developer mode should be active in the game. And by the way, if you don't have Notepad++, you can also open it with just a regular Notepad, which comes with any Windows computer. Same thing, scroll down. Uh, you can see it there. Change the what would normally be false to true, and developer mode will be enabled. At this point, you're pretty much done. Go into the game, and developer mode will be available. So, what can you all do with developer mode? Let me uh, demonstrate here. Now, in order to open up the developer mode controls here, you have to push the tilde key. The tilde key is the key below the escape key on most keyboards, or the key above the tab key, depending on how you want to look at it. Uh, it's also the key before the one key. So that tilde key, the, the, the funny key that uh, you know nobody really seems to know what to do with, that is the tilde key there. So you're going to push it once. It's going to show you the log. You, may, you can look at that if you want. Uh, you're going to push it one more time, and you're going to see a blinking cursor there where you can uh, type stuff in. Uh, easiest way is just to tab through the list of commands here, and there's a lot of different commands, especially with 19. seems like they've added a lot more. We'll just uh, kind of tab through them here. Exit. Should be self-explanatory. Exits the game. Uh, add wildlife animal to debug. Auto save. Like I said, all kinds of different stuff here. And I myself don't know what all the different commands do. It's not like Giants really tells you. So there's just a couple of them here that I know and uh, find somewhat useful. And of course, if you start having mods, especially course play... Uh, course play also adds a couple of controls here as well. If you watched any of my Farming Simulator 17 videos, you've actually seen me use that a couple of times to uh, fix a broken game that has been caused by course play doing something that shouldn't be, something went wrong. Course play, you know, completely locked the game up. Normally, the only way to get around that is you have to close your game. You'll lose your work. Not cool. Uh, using this, you can uh, get into here, you know, tell course play to quit. Assuming, you know, the game isn't too broken anyway. If it's too broken, this won't even work. But in previous versions, you could, with course play, tell it to stop, fix your game, save it, and you'll be good. Uh, GS set time day, fairly self-explanatory. What am I? I'm 11 o'clock right at the moment. Let me tell it. Uh, I think it's 1,000. I believe is the proper way to do it. Yes, daytime 1,000. That sets it to, oh, 1,600. Interesting. I think they changed that. I thought it was supposed to go to 10 o'clock. Oh, well. Went from 11, now we're down to 1600. But anyway, you can set your day time with that. Let me uh, tab through a couple more here. Uh, GS toggle flight and no HUD mode. Uh, this is probably one I use somewhat often. We're just going to push enter here. Uh, so turning that on equals true. We'll just close this here again. Oh, get rid of that. So at this point, you now can activate no HUD, and that is the O key on your keyboard. So if you push O, actually, you know, let me get in a track here, so just uh, it's a little more obvious as to what happens here. So we're in a tractor. You got all the HUDs up, the maps down in the corner, you know, dates and stuff up in the top there. Uh, if you push O, all that stuff disappears, so you got no HUDs. I know some people like that. Uh, I typically play with HUDs on, just, you know, I get rid of the map there and play like that. But anyway, you can play with completely no HUDs, just O, and it hides all the HUDs. Also, you can fly. So to uh, fly, you have to push J on the keyboard. 
And then Q and E will raise you up and down. So J activates flight. Q and E will bring you up and down. So Q brings you up. E brings you down. And it'll let you fly. And J de deactivates flying. So you yeah, deactivate, you <laughs> fall. So I'm pretty self-explanatory there. Also, a couple other things you can do with it. F2 will show your frame rate. So you can see I'm running 60 frames up there. Uh, F3, I don't know what F3 does. I'm, I'm not really sure. F4 will show the wireframe view. This is uh, particularly useful when uh, getting rid of stumps. So you can see here, actually, uh, let's see, let's turn this back off here. We see it. There's the uh, tree. Now, when you're back in farming Sim 17, you cut the tree down, grind the stump out. You can see there's stump or parts of the tree that is beneath the terrain. You could turn this on and kind of really see where the stump was and make sure you got rid of the entire stump that way. Uh, particularly useful on maps that caused a lot of problems with logging. That way you made sure you got completely rid of the tree. Also, F5. And let me uh, demonstrate this here. Let's see, where's a good place? Um, eh, how about the spinnery? Sure, let's visit the spinnery here. Uh, this is more useful, especially on modern maps. Uh, when you're playing on a modern map and you're kind of scratching your head, where is the trigger to dump whatever you're trying to do? You know, you can't find it. Some mod authors just are not good at marking where the triggers are. And, you know, I do get it in real life. You know, you're not going to drive up somewhere. Oh, look at this. They got, uh, got triggers marked on the ground there. So what you can do is F5. It's going to make the game look really ugly. It probably really kills the frame rate. Yeah, ooh, really kills the frame rate too, doesn't it? Uh, but it'll put... Oh, there's not... Oh, no, there is two one here. Okay, it's really short. But you can see the triggers in the game here. Uh, and it emits, along with these red boxes and uh, yellowish white things all sticking up out of the ground. Also up on uh, you know, some of the houses and stuff. But what you're looking for here, there's an orange box around where my cursor is too, by the way. I'm not talking about that. But there's this kind of uh, orangish brown box. And I don't know how well this will show up in the video here. But there's this orangish brown box that is the trigger for selling wool here. This is the uh, spinnery, the wool sell point. And I don't know how well that shows up, but like I said, there's the trigger here for where the wool gets sold. Like I said, really hard to see it here, but obviously when you load it up in your own game, it'll show up a lot better than it will the video. So that is useful there. Uh, let's see what else is there. I think that's probably most of the uh, main things you're going to use with developer mode. Uh, like I said, once you get course play, you'll find some more uses for it. That really comes in use if uh, course play uh, screws up and uh, screws your game. You can go into the controls here. Course play adds a bunch of controls. Uh, air running. Uh oh, that's not good. <laughs> not supposed to see that there. Uh, attempt to index field current GUI nil value. Huh. Well, that's kind of an interesting error message. Uh, like I said, too, you can see your error messages that way. So. Again, you really don't like to see those, that's for sure. Not uh, when it says something wrong with the Lua script. Anyway, everyone, that is how to enable developer mode in Farming Simulator 19. Like I said, it's the same as previous versions of Farming Simulator. Uh, you have any additional comments or questions about this, be sure to uh, put them in the comments section down below there. Also, don't forget to uh, like the video and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching and till next time.